Every team, every topic, everywhere. This is Believe. Welcome to another episode of the Halloween Podcast. I am your host, Lyle Perez, and it's finally here. October has arrived. The month where the veil between the living and the dead is its thinnest. It's October 1st, 2024, and you're listening to episode 20 of our Haunted America series. Today, we're headed to Maryland, the old line state, where the spirits are restless and the shadows hold secrets long forgotten. From haunted battlefields where echoes of wars still linger, to eerie mansions where footsteps of the past can still be heard. Maryland is a state with a dark and chilling history, so make sure you hold on to those steering wheels because we are about to get spooky in the state of Maryland. We begin at Antium Battlefield, the site of the bloodiest single-day battle in American history. On September 17, 1862, over 22,000 soldiers were killed, wounded, or went missing in just a single day. The ground itself seemed to pulse with the memories of that horrific day, and many believe that the spirits of those who perished still linger here, trapped between worlds. Visitors to Antium have reported hearing the crack of gunfire, the clash of bayonets, and the distant cries of soldiers on fog-laden mornings. Ghostly figures in Civil War uniforms are often seen wandering the battlefields, their faces etched with pain and confusion, as if they're still searching for something they've lost. The Burnside Bridge is a particular hotspot for paranormal activity. Some visitors have heard the unmistakable sounds of running footsteps, splashing water, and the desperate cries of soldiers attempting to cross. Shadows move where there shouldn't be one, and cold hands have been felt on shoulders as if the past is reaching out to the present. The battlefield is open to the public, but those who visit often leave with a chill that no autumn breeze can cause. Next, we find ourselves in the heart of Baltimore at the historic Lord Baltimore Hotel, built in 1928. This grand hotel has played host to countless guests, but not all of them have checked out. The most infamous resident is Molly, a young girl who reportedly leapt to her death from the 19th floor during the Great Depression, along with her parents. Her spirit, they say, never left. Guests have reported seeing a little girl in a long white dress, clenching a red ball, wandering the hallways at night. Some hear her soft giggles echoing through the corridors, or find their room doors opening and closing on their own. Elevators seem to move on their own accord, traveling from floor to floor without a passenger in sight. Mirrors reveal Molly's reflection when no one else is around and many feel an icy presence in their rooms, as if she's standing just behind them. The Lord Baltimore Hotel continues to operate, offering both luxury and a chance to encounter the paranormal. Our next destination takes us to Point Lookout State Park. Perched on a windswept peninsula, where the Potomac River meets the Chesapeake Bay, During the Civil War, this was the site of a Union prison camp for Confederate soldiers. Over 4,000 men died here due to disease, starvation, and exposure. Their spirits are said to roam the grounds to this day. Visitors have reported hearing cries for help, disembodied footsteps clutching on gravel paths, and the sound of clanking chains. Some have seen apparitions of soldiers walking along the beach or through the remnants of the old fort, their faces hollow and filled with sorrow. 
The Point Lookout Lighthouse is also said to be haunted. Many have spotted the figure of a woman in a long, dark dress standing at the top of the tower, her gaze fixed on the water as if searching for someone she lost long ago. Others have heard a man's voice whispering names or the creak of heavy boots climbing the stairs. The park is open to the public, but many visitors feel a heavy sadness in the air as if the past is refusing to let go. Now let's move on to the Maryland State House in Annapolis, the oldest state capital still in continuous legislative use. Completed in 1772, it's seen pivotal moments in American history, like the ratification of the Treaty of Paris, ending the Revolutionary War. But beneath its stately exterior, there are whispers of ghosts who roam these halls. Staff and visitors alike have reported seeing a shadowy figure in 18th century clothing wandering the corridors at night, believed to be Thomas Stone, one of Maryland's signers of the Declaration of Independence. The sounds of footsteps echo through the chambers when no one is around, and the doors are known to open and close on their own. Some have even heard the faint scratching of a quill on parchment, or felt a sudden chill, as if someone from another time is standing right beside them. The State House is open for tours, but those who visit often feel the weight of the past hanging heavy in the air, as if the spirits of history are watching. Our next stop is the Davis Memorial Library in Ellicott City, a place where whispers fill the air and shadows seem to dance among the shelves. Built in the early 1900s, the library has long been rumored to be haunted by the spirit of Mary, a young librarian who reportedly took her own life after a tragic love affair. Her sorrow is said to be woven into the very walls of the building. Patrons and staff have reported seeing Mary's spectral figure drifting between the bookshelves, her eyes searching for something or someone long lost. Her apparition often appears in a soft white glow, her hair gently blowing as if caught in an unseen breeze. Her presence is accompanied by the scent of lavender and the soft sound of weeping. Late at night, books have been seen flying off the shelves, sometimes landing in patterns that spell out words or phrases. Visitors have felt an icy hand touch their shoulder or heard the sound of a woman softly whispering, Help me. The old rocking chairs in the corner often creak as if someone is sitting in them, rocking back and forth, although it remains empty. Some have even seen a spectral face appear in the windows at twilight, gazing out with a look of eternal longing. The library remains open, but beware. Those who enter after dark might find themselves caught in a ghostly story that's still being written. Next, we visit the historic Carroll Mansion in Baltimore. Once the home of Charles Carroll, the last surviving signer of the Declaration of Independence. But while the house is a testament to history, it's also a portal to the past. Many who enter feel a sudden chill, as if the very walls are whispering secrets from beyond the grave. Visitors have reported seeing shadowy figures moving through the corridors, their footsteps echoing through the grand halls. The apparition of a woman in a long, black dress is often seen on the grand staircase, her eyes filled with sorrow as she gazes out the window, waiting for someone who never arrives. Guests have described the sensation of hands pushing against their arms or a faint, mournful cry coming from empty rooms. The basement is known to be particularly active. Many have felt an intense cold or nausea upon entering. The faint cries of a child are often heard echoing from the basement walls, and some visitors have caught a glimpse of a small boy playing with a ball, only to find him vanish before their eyes. The scent of old perfume or freshly lit candles often fill the air, 
even when no one has been around to light them. The mansion is open for tours, but those who enter should be prepared to feel the weight of the past and perhaps encounter one of its lingering spirits. This is a mini meditation guided by Bombus. Repeat after me. I'm comfy, comfy. I'm cozy, cozy. I have zero blisters on my toes, blisters. And that's cuz I wear Bombus, the softest socks, underwear and t-shirts that give back. One purchased equals one donated. Now go to bombus.com slash listen and use code listen for 20% off your first purchase. That's B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash listen and use code listen at checkout. Next, we find ourselves at the Dr. Samuel A. Mudd House in Waldorf, where history and tragedy collide. Dr. Mudd, the physician who treated John Wilkes Booth's broken leg after the assassination of President Lincoln, lived right in this house. Mudd was arrested and imprisoned for his role in the conspiracy. And although he was later pardoned, many believe the spirits of that dark chapter are still very much alive within these walls. Visitors have reported seeing the ghostly figure of a man in a dark coat, believed to be John Wilkes Booth, limping through the grounds. The sensation of being watched is very common and many feel a cold hand touch their shoulder as they stand by the old staircase. Inside, the ghost of Dr. Mudd himself is said to roam, often seen standing by the window, his face filled with regret and sorrow. The smell of fresh tobacco smoke lingers in his study, and some have heard the faint sound of a man coughing or groaning in pain. Footsteps echo through the empty hallways, and some have even heard whispers saying, hide me. The house is now a museum, open to visitors who wish to learn more about this dark chapter in American history, and maybe come face to face with its spectral residents. Now we venture to the Church Hill Theater, a charming yet haunted venue located in the small town of Church Hill, Maryland. Originally built as a movie house in the 1920s, it was converted into a live theater in the 1980s. Over the years, many actors and patrons have encountered something, or someone, that doesn't belong to this world. The most famous spirit is that of a former actor who died tragically during a performance. He is often seen on stage, dressed in period clothing, rehearsing lines for a play that ended decades ago. Some say he has unfinished business, waiting for his final curtain call. Cold drafts are often felt backstage, even on warm, sunny days, and props move on their own, as if guided by unseen hands. Actors have reported feeling an icy grip on their arms or the sensation of someone standing just behind them, whispering forgotten lines in their ears. The audience has seen shadowy figures flint across the stage, and a woman's soft singing is heard coming from the empty wings. The theater remains active, drawing both the living and the dead to its performances, where the ghostly audience sometimes outnumber the living ones. Our next destination is the Patatsko Female Institute, perched on a hill in Ellicott City. This former girls' school which opened its doors in 1837, has long been abandoned. But some believe the spirits of the students and staff remain, trapped in a spectral version of their old routines. On foggy nights, visitors have reported seeing the faint figure of a woman in a white dress gliding through the ruins with an unreal glow. The sound of girls' laughter and faint music can be heard drifting on the wind as if a dance or a party from long ago is still in full swing. Some have felt a tap on their shoulder or heard some soft footsteps behind them, only to turn around and find no one there. Cold spots are very common, and some have seen shadowy figures peeking around corners 
or felt the distinct sensation of being watched. The site is open for ghost tours, where many have captured mysterious orbs and apparitions on camera, adding to the Institute's reputation as one of Maryland's most haunted locations. Our final stop tonight is Forest Haven Asylum in Laurel, Maryland, an abandoned mental institution with a very grim past. Opened in 1925, Forest Haven was once a facility for those with mental illnesses, but it became notorious for overcrowding, neglect, and abuse. It was closed in 1991, but some believe the spirits of those who suffered and died there are still trapped within its crumbling walls. Visitors have reported hearing blood-curdling screams echoing through the empty halls, along with the eerie sound of gurneys rolling down the corridors. Some have felt an intense chill or seen shadowy figures darting through the darkness. The distant cries for help or the moans of patients in agony have been heard, and cold hands have been felt brushing against the skin of those who dare to enter. The air is thick with the smell of antiseptic and decay, and many who visit feel an overwhelming sense of sadness, as if the walls themselves are soaked with sorrow. The buildings are now abandoned, but the restless spirits remain, their echoes forever etched into the fabric of this haunted place. And that concludes our chilling tour of Haunted Maryland, a state where history and the supernatural collide in eerie yet unexpected ways. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to our Haunted America series. We are counting down the days to Halloween finally in October. It's been a good time so far. I'm so glad you guys are here. If you're enjoying Haunted America, please, please, please leave us a five-star review wherever you're getting your podcasts from. If you have any questions or comments or want to suggest anything for a future show, go ahead, send me an email at thehalloweenpodcast at gmail.com. I've been getting a lot of messages and even some reviews of places that I've missed in certain states. I'm sorry, guys, but I'm only doing 10 of each state, and there's some states that have probably hundreds of haunted locations. So I picked a lot of them at random. What I'm planning on doing is I'm going to do A few episodes after Haunted America is complete, probably sometime in December, maybe late November, of all of the missed locations that you guys wished I would have talked about, and I'll do separate shows for those. So if you want me to include any of the haunted locations that I didn't get to in Haunted America, send me an email, leave me a review, I'll get to it in due time. And please go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash the Halloween podcast and give it a like. We really appreciate it. Make sure you come back tomorrow because we are on our way to Massachusetts. And you know I'm going to be talking about some witches. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good night.